I mean, there were guys that we, of course, knew were going to be injured that we haven't seen yet. Uh, Jamison Williams, uh, you know, Josh uh, Pashaw, um, I think is how you say his name, the second round pick. But we already knew those guys weren't going to be available to us. And, uh, you know, yeah, both the quarterbacks kind of showed that they shouldn't be backup quarterbacks in the NFL, right? And they both had game time last year in the actual season, and they didn't look very good then either. So for the Lions, for the backup quarterback route, and it sounded like Dan Campbell um, got some clarification, I guess, like just based on what he said in the press conference. The only clarification I could see is that we're not going with either one of these guys because they were both <laughs> like just honest to God that bad. And with with the backup quarterback situation, um, at first I thought, and you know, I even said it on here, I thought both the guys would end up making the roster, and now there's like conflicting you know, trains of thought. Are both of them going to make it? Are neither of them going to make it? And they're going to look elsewhere to try and find a backup quarterback. You know, Carson Strong got released today, you know, got cut. Uh, a, a rookie quarterback, an undrafted rookie quarterback, uh, I believe. And But he was somebody who, at least at the start of the college season last year, was thought that he could potentially be a number one pick. College season didn't work out like that. And obviously he didn't show what he needed to show in the preseason. But I'd rather take a swing on a guy like that than stick with, you know, Blau or Boyle. Uh, I'm 100% with you on that. I will say Blau looked much more comfortable than Boyle. To me, watching them play all preseason uh, and watching them play last season too. Blau just looks like he at least kind of belongs on the field. Boyle doesn't look like he belongs at all. He doesn't look like he knows what he's doing when actual game pressure gets involved. He might be wonderful in practice. Apparently, he's got a strong arm and all that stuff. He's got the size that people like in a quarterback six foot four. The anti-Drew Staten. Right, you, terrible in practice. You, you wouldn't know. Lit it up in the games. Right? You wouldn't know he's six foot four by the number of times his ball got batted by defensive linemen, but apparently he's tall. Uh, Blau just, he, just, every time I watch him, he just looks like he's more comfortable in in a game than Tim Boyle does to me. Uh, so I would give it to Blau off of what I watched. If, if my options were, it's one of these two. I have to take one of these two. I'm taking David Blau over Tim Boyle. He just looks more comfortable and ready in the game. I don't care that Tim Boyle is a, a noon shooter. When the game's at 8 o'clock, I don't need a noon shooter. So <laughs> to me, David Blau won it out of those two. I'm 100% with you on finding somebody else. I would love Carson Strong. I wanted the Lions to draft Carson Strong at the end of the draft. I said, go take a swing on this guy. He was good in college. He's got a strong arm. He has the right mentality. He has the right size they're looking for in a quarterback. Everything I saw from Carson Strong in college told me to take a swing on this guy late in the NFL draft if no one else had already picked him up by the seventh round. Obviously, it didn't happen. But he's available. And the good thing with the Lions is the waiver wire is coming. And we're number two. Jacksonville is number one. And we're number two as far as the waiver wires. So we really have our pick of the litter of whoever is available as far as quarterbacks is concerned. Uh, that would not include Jimmy Garoppolo, who has decided to... Well, actually, I think the Niners decided for him that no one wants to pick up Jimmy Garoppolo's <laughs> contract. And so no one wants to trade with us. No one wants to make a deal. Uh, so we're just going to have him as a backup uh, even though this is this is Trey Lance's team, but we're going to have Jimmy Garoppolo as a backup, which is a nice thing to say. We'll see if it actually is true. We'll see what happens with Trey Lance actually struggles if they if they run to Jimmy G or not. But uh, for everyone else out there that's a quarterback in the NFL that is not on a team, the Lions really have their pick. They do, you know. They're and they saw some of Mason Rudolph on Sunday against the Steelers, who people have been wanting them to you know be connected to as well and apparently the Steelers have already gotten some inquiries on Mason Rudolph we weren't able to see what what teams um, I guess had asked for him and you know even Jimmy G uh, it's kind of what I thought the 49ers should do and I think the Lions still could make a play for him if Jared Goff goes down with an injury um, because it did restructure his contract so my guess would be that it's not you know he's not making as much as he was before so if Jared Goff goes down, then Jimmy G's value obviously goes up, which is one of the reasons I think the Niners did this, was to give themselves a little bit of insurance in case Trey Lance gets hurt, as well as they know one of these starting quarterbacks is going to go down 
at some point during the season. And if it's a team that feel like they can win, then you go ahead and obviously give Jimmy G a call and say the Lions start out, I don't know, two and two, right? And then golf goes down. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they made a call to the Niners saying, hey, what's it going to take to get, you know, Garoppolo over here? And I, so I just, I guess I wouldn't rule out Jimmy G to the Lions just yet. I'd rule it out, you know, today. <laughs> um, but just at some point throughout the season, I think the trade deadline is week, I think it's like week 10. Uh, I might be a, a little bit off. It might be week eight, you know, somewhere around. That's like the middle of the NFL season. But uh, I, I wouldn't rule that out. I really wouldn't rule out anything with the Lions QB carousel right now, honestly, because there's just, you know, I think both the guys played so bad and they've been so bad throughout last year and this year that when Campbell says they had clarity, maybe this is just me hoping, but like I really think he's talking about we need to just find somebody else completely because neither of these guys are. <laughs> well, if that is the case, he's got about a week because the the cuts are done by tomorrow evening, uh, Tuesday evening, and the season starts not this weekend, but the next weekend. So he doesn't have much time to figure it out if he is really going to just wipe the slate clean of our backup quarterbacks altogether and go find someone else. Uh, but if, if it's if it's one of the two that we have to keep, I think it's going to end up being David Blau. The, the other battle that really stood out uh, in this game against the Steelers was the running back battle. And we saw Justin Jackson, we saw Craig Reynolds, we saw Jamar Jefferson. Jackson, eight rushes for 44 yards, two catches for 39. Reynolds, six rushes for 31 yards, two catches for 13. Jamar Jefferson, six rushes for 28 yards. 27 of them was on the draw play on third and 17. Uh, so the, his numbers don't look quite as impressive outside of that one run for 27 yards. So what did you take from this? You and I both are of the same mind as far as, uh, you know, Justin Jackson. We'd love for him to be involved in the mix. But uh, what did you see and uh, what do you think is going to end up being the case? Uh, I think Justin Jackson's going to still end up making the team. Like, I hope so. We went through his career numbers the last week, right? He's almost have five yards of carry for his career. And he's just a guy who's steady. You know, obviously he's not world beating, which is why he's been, re you know, released by two teams already and, and is on his third team. Uh, I think Reynolds is probably going to be end up being the odd man out. I just have the feeling that the Lions like Jamar Jefferson. I feel like they liked him last year you know when he came in and he was able to uh, be sort of productive at least when their running backs were dropping like flies and Jefferson was able to come in behind an offensive line who had good pieces but you know with injuries was still in and out and not all the way together so I think they like Jefferson I think they like Jackson at least I like Jackson so I think Reynolds is probably going to be the guy that is the odd man out in Detroit but uh, I wouldn't be, I mean, Reynolds, I guess he could make his way on an NFL team or just whichever guy's cut. But they could also, of course, just be like re-signed re to the practice squad, which even going back to Blau and Boyle, um, if either of those guys are released or both of those guys are released, I wouldn't you know, be surprised if they were kept on the practice squad as well. What about Godwin and Gabuke? No, I don't think anybody else wants them. He rarely got any run against the Steelers. Against the Steelers. He had one rush. I think he had one catch. Um, I, I know they're looking for special teams as well. I mean, is it just a foregone conclusion he's on the 53-man roster? Who is that? Sorry. Uh, Godwin Eagle Bouquet. Um, I mean, I hope so. I, I don't think it's a foregone uh, conclusion by, by any means because I think they're still trying to find, like, their kick returner. And if Eagle Bouquet is going to be on the team, my guess is it would be because of his kick return, punt return prowess. But if they're not using him for that, then that makes his job security like way shakier right I and mean, that's why because he didn't really get much run in the offense uh i think he was back there for returns i think they mixed was it him and maurice alexander i think it was both of them they took turns on this one i can't i i can't remember i wasn't focusing so much on special teams i was really focusing on uh the running backs and the and the quarterbacks in this one uh so i, I didn't see too much but you know just looking through the stats at least i didn't see much when it came to godwin so i didn't know if there was something that it just feels like it's a foregone conclusion he's going to be on the roster in some way shape or form they're just not sure if they're going to use him specifically for special teams and maybe throw him in the mix a little bit here or there on the offense which obviously is the case before yeah, I mean, I don't think any of these guys are a foregone conclusion. Uh, you know, like I'm sure we might get to it. But even Jared Davis, 
I thought he'd probably at least make the team. Not that I was so happy about it because I don't think he's a good linebacker. And then apparently he's, you know, he, he was one of the first ones cut, I guess, or at least one of the first ones that that we got, you know, reports of him being cut. So you, you really just never know, especially with a team like the Lions, where they're trying to improve from, you know, just uh, just every angle, really. And I think a lot of these guys are super close in like the coaching and team evaluations. And it just kind of comes down to preference as a fan of which one you want to keep. But I don't know that there's a giant talent difference or even like potential talent difference in a lot of these guys, a lot of these bubble guys. Yeah, uh, especially with Jared Davis. It's, you know, when you are a top 20 pick in the NFL draft, it makes a little bit more noise when you're cut <laughs> before the NFL season even officially begins. Uh, so no, no surprise that he got a whole lot of uh, headlines when it came to him being let go. He was not the only one let go. Uh, Khalil Pimpleton, who, you know, gave us that great, uh, well, great uh, juggling act <laughs> on Hard Knocks. Uh, man just can't catch a football when it counts. Uh, he had some catches, but these ones in the end zone, he just he can't come up with them. I mean, I, look, was Blau's pass fantastic? No. But was it catchable? Yeah, it was around his knees in the you know front part of the end zone where he was. It was catchable. He didn't catch it. Uh, he had one of the corner of the end zone in in uh, the, I think in last week's game against the Colts. Didn't catch it. Like you got to at least come up with one of these to give them a reason to keep you. When they see that when it counts, you're not stepping up. It's hard to keep you, even as much as we liked him. And I liked him a lot from what I, you know, I saw him in Hard Knocks, at least, you know, the little bit that we saw of him, the interview with him when they're talking to him. I liked the kid, you know, and I hope that he gets picked up somewhere for a practice squad. I don't want to see him out of football. He's fast as hell uh, and, uh, you know, seems like a good kid. So, you know, I'd, I'd like to see him uh, somewhere else. Someone like Devin Funchess, been around the league for a while as a wide receiver, tried to make it as a tight end. Uh, Lions have enough tight ends. Devin Funchess didn't move the needle, uh, so that wasn't happening. Uh, Kendall Lamb, if, you're, if all of you are doing the same thing, Ryan and I going, who? He didn't make the team either. And the big one, obviously, that is going to upset the masses of uh, Kool-Aid drinking Lions fans, Tom Kennedy is not on the roster for the Detroit Lions. No, and in... Not again. And we talked about him a couple weeks ago as opposed to like, you know, which receivers might make it over him. And I didn't think Kennedy was going to make the roster, but, you know, his performances in the preseason, like, I don't know that he could have done a whole lot more. You no, know, he, he was out there catching touchdowns, unlike Pimpleton. But the I guess the team just needed to see, you know, saw what they needed to see. Uh, say a guy like Quintus Cephas ends up making the roster. He's done better in actual NFL games uh, at this point in his career than Tom Kennedy has. And I think that that is important for just fans to remember, right, when they're watching preseason games, especially of guys who have in-game NFL experience, is when the coaches are evaluating these players, they're not solely looking at what is happening this training camp or this preseason. They also have... 17 games of the previous season to go off of and in the case of, of a guy like Cephas or Kennedy I'm sure they didn't play in all 17 games Kennedy certainly didn't but they have a whole prior seasons of knowledge as well so we look at the preseason and we're like oh man Tom Kennedy's going off but maybe he was just facing more of an uphill battle than any of us realized because we were so focused on what we saw you know in the three preseason games that he was at and yeah I you know, the look, the kid can play football. I'm not going to argue that. You know, we got to watch him. If you're blowing up against second string and third stringers in the NFL, these are still guys that can play football. They just can't play it at the top level that the NFL has to offer, which is why they're not first string guys. I hope they keep Tom Kennedy as a practice squad guy for one depth in the wide receiver position where guys get hurt all the time it's a very you know it's a position that's easily injury prone these guys are running full speed and getting hit but also to work against our secondary which is absolute trash <laughs> and so to get to go against the guy that at least shows that he can catch the ball when it's in his area and for the most part he did if it was anywhere near him he was coming up with it for the most part and so to have someone like that to go against can only make our terrible secondary at least a little bit better. So I do hope that he gets, you know, picked up for the practice squad. I won't be surprised if a team that's in need of wide receivers really goes and just grabs him, you know, and makes him a better offer than the Lions can offer from the practice squad position. 
I liked what I saw. Obviously, look, two touchdowns in one game, 100 plus yards in another. But, you know, two out of the three games, he absolutely balled out. So I don't know what more the kid could have done. It really was that much of an uphill battle. And it's just, you know, like you said, he's, what, 27 years old, 26, 27 years old, been around for a little bit now doing this. Uh, so it's just, there were just names ahead of him, whether they were hurt and not even playing, like a Jamison Williams, who obviously isn't going to get cut, or it's just they've been around and done it for a while in, you know, in a Josh Reynolds or a Quintus Cephas. It's just, there was too much for him to overcome. I I hope they find a way to keep him in one way or another, but I won't be surprised also if a team that needs bodies will snatch him up because he's shown that he has the ability to catch the ball in an NFL game. He's going to go to the Patriots. (laughs) They need wide receivers, so I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, What did surprise me, our offensive line. Ryan, this offensive line has been touted all offseason. Oh, they're going to be a top 10 offensive line. Watch out. We're going to run it down people's throats. Uh, Did you watch the game against the Steelers? Because I didn't see a damn thing that showed me that this offensive line is a top 10 offensive line. I saw flags being called for holding. Taylor Decker, Jonah Jackson. Uh, I saw both of our quarterbacks sacked. I saw a rushing attack that didn't do much until the second stringers and third stringers got in the game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, look, I understand it's the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they're known for their defense more than anything else throughout their entire history of the NFL. But for a team that's supposed to have a solid offensive line, I didn't see it on Sunday. No, it didn't show up on Sunday. I mean, they were going against you know T.J. Watt, at least for, for part of the time. Um, and a defense that is pretty good in the Steelers. And again, they were without their quarterback and their two best running backs, who I think, while offensive line can still protect, you know, if you have a worse quarterback back there who's not making decisions as fast, or even a running back who's not, you know, as good as hitting, at hitting the holes like Swift and Williams are, it can, it can make the offensive line look worse than it was. I still don't really have any concerns about the offensive line going into the regular season. They didn't look good in the preseason game, but uh, again, it, it was the preseason game, and all of these guys in their own respect have had some pretty good success in the NFL. Um, you know, Obviously, you had Sewell, who was good last year, Decker, who's been a solid tackle basically his entire career, uh, Frank Ragnow, who's one of the better centers in the NFL. Uh, Vitae, who struggled with the Lions when he first got there, but then, you know, I think he's going to be a little bit better um, now that he's playing uh, the guard spot instead of instead of a tackle. Uh, and Jonah Jackson, who was a rookie last year, who's probably the weak link of the offensive line, but, I mean, he was fine for, you know, a rookie line in the last year, and he, like, projects to only get better. So I still don't have any concerns, really, about the offensive line, and I do think the offense – can be pretty good. I think some people are hyping it up to be maybe a little bit more than what we should be expecting because we still do have Jared Goff under center. But I think the offense can be pretty good, and if they are going to be any good, it's going to be because the offensive line is giving Goff time and is creating holes for Swift and Williams. All right, look, man, I'm your co-host. You my co-host. You tell that four-legged furball there to keep quiet because it's a two-person show, not a three-person show. Anyway, uh, one... He has some some thoughts on the offensive line. Apparently. Uh, So, one thing that did get answered, we know who our other cornerback's going to be. Jeff Okuda, who... Look, when, when Trubisky was in there, he had a tackle for loss, and he broke up the pass on third down. It's what you want your cornerbacks to do. So he has solidified himself. He is going to be the starting cornerback uh, for the Detroit Lions. So that is one thing answered. Uh, it's kind of what I expected. I know that it was a battle with him and Harris. But the whole time in my mind, I kept thinking it's Okuda's job to lose. And I think it's a good sign. Obviously, it's a great sign for him. But I think it's a good sign for the Lions that Okuda didn't lose the job. Yeah, it's it's a good sign. It might be a bad sign that Will Harris probably isn't any good after converting over over, over from safety. But uh, there were, I guess, reports today that Okuda might have taken over as the the like the first cornerback on the depth chart, even higher than uh, Oruwariye, 
who obviously was not fighting for the spot, so you figured the cornerback one spot was his. But I guess Okuda's been really impressive lately. Uh, he's still gotten beat a couple times in in the preseason. He's also made some really nice plays in the preseason. So I just think overall the Lions' secondary isn't going to be any good, but I guess it is better for the future that Okuda won the job and didn't lose it because if he lost it, I think you would have Lions fans in just mass hysteria. Hey, Ryan Griffin here. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Griffin and Bats. Be sure to give us your thoughts in the comments below. Remember to click the bell to receive the latest notifications from DSN and subscribe for breaking news, community blogs, polls, contests, and other content.